Welcome to Cloud Security Basics, a new series where we explain the ins and outs of securing your application on Google Cloud. Sound fun? Then stick around because in this episode, you'll learn about the second of three distinct areas of cloud security risk, data. Hello, Cloud Detective. You may have found protections for the first cloud security risk, access. But how much have you thought about the second risk, data? How can you prevent problems with the data you store? There are many ways to get trapped here. Improper disclosure of your info by employees. Imagine accidentally sending an email containing credit card or social security numbers. Your application could disseminate harmful data, sharing phishing URLs or malware. Or data could be stored somewhere without proper security protocols in place. What can you do to stop that? For your data's sake, I hope you know the answer to my question. OK, here's what we know. Data represents what data gets stored and where it's located. You must be sure that you don't store personally identifiable information, or PII, which is data that could potentially be used to identify a user. And even if you don't store sensitive information, if you can't find where you stored it, that's not going to be very useful to you or your customers. Typical concerns here include something bad with the people who can access machines. For example, a compromised employee accessing data they shouldn't. Something bad with the data itself, like receiving bad data or storing illegal data. If the data coming into your system is junk, then even if every other component of data security is working as normal, the system still won't function as intended. Sometimes unsanitized data can even be used to exploit a system to further compromise the application. Something bad with the transfer or storage of data, for example, not being able to find where data is stored. In this case, the cloud solution would be losing data, whether because it never got stored or because it got lost once it was. Either way, the end result is that the data you need can't be retrieved. Something bad with the machine data is being stored on, like it containing malware or if there were compromised VMs. In this case, even though the data is stored correctly, it might be leaked or accessed by the wrong people. Luckily, Google Cloud provides a lot of tools and services to protect its users, including, but not limited to, IAM for controlling access to data resources, encryption to make sure stored and transferred data can't be read even if it is stolen, logging and monitoring to make sure that you can track what's happening in your system, DID for making sure PII information is stripped before it's ever stored in your system, organizational policy to set rules on who can access what data and where it's stored, and better VMs or VM management, like for SETI or Google host patching, et cetera, to make sure that the machines you use are secure. Let's see how they work. So how do we prevent problems with data we store? I just listed a few tools. I want to highlight a few of them. Cloud IAM lets you grant granular access to specific Google Cloud resources and helps prevent access to other resources. Cloud IAM lets you adopt the security principle of least privilege, where you only grant necessary permissions to access specific resources. This works to prevent people from accidentally or maliciously accessing data they shouldn't. For example, IAM could let you keep UI developers from accessing credit card databases they didn't need to access in the first place. Say there was an access violation, though. That's where logging and monitoring can be used to track who is accessing what and to automate the information gathering and alerting process as much as possible. Cloud Platform provides tools such as Google Cloud Logging and Google Cloud Monitoring that make it easy to collect and analyze request logs and monitor the availability of your infrastructure services, like VM instances. These tools make it easy for you to create custom dashboards and set alerts when issues occur. For example, you could set up notifications to warn you of suspicious activity in your system or to notify you when access to a resource is taking too long, for instance. But really, it's good to be proactive as much as possible and set up organizational policy. An organizational policy is a centralized configuration of restrictions on how your organization's resources can be used. They define guardrails for your development teams to stay within compliance boundaries and help teams move quickly without worrying of breaking compliance. For example, you could set a policy to require all newly created, restarted, or updated Cloud SQL instances to use customer-managed encryption keys. All of these tools and more work together to protect data. Mm, and that's it. I know the answer to Brad Actor's question. 
Hello, detective. I see you've been busy. You answered my little question. What if there's a problem with the data you store? You learned that Google provides a plethora of tools to help customers protect data, including IAM, encryption, logging and monitoring, organizational policy, and more. These features allow you to make sure only valid data is being stored, control who can access data that's stored, and help you find the data you do store. Very good, very good. You've answered today's question, but be ready, because next time, I want to see what you know about securing your virtual and physical hardware. So there you have it, another episode of Cloud Security Basics. Next episode will focus on the last of three distinct areas of cloud security risk, platform. In the meantime, if you want to take a deeper dive into securing data in the cloud, then check out the article linked in the description below. And stay tuned for the rest of the Cloud Security Basics series because when it comes to security, you can't let bad actors win.